Talk about purging the swamp. Which could become known as Revenge Friday. Tonight, two star witnesses of the impeachment hearings are out of their job. The White House is in the process of cutting 70, 70 Obama-era holdovers from the National Security Council. Damn. All four federal prosecutors have resigned from the case that they were prosecuting against longtime Trump friend and confidant Roger Stone. We do sure. have some breaking news here, and that is former U.S. Attorney Jesse Liu has now officially resigned from the Treasury Department. The long-anticipated indictments are all but here. Getting rid of the rat's nest isn't easy. You first have to get rid of the critters on the periphery before you can take out the nest. We've got a five alarm, DEF CON, RED ALERT, RAT FESTATION going on here. Meanwhile, the circus is refusing to leave. Get some popcorn ready, folks, cause it's about to get real. Now that Trump has been acquitted, it's his administration's turn to play. I mean, wow, what a day. It's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen to, to see. They said that plane's 800 feet above the racetrack right now. What an entrance by the president of the United States. That's America. Air Force One buzz in the tower, Daytona 500. The NASCAR Cup cars and what Secret Service calls the beast, the presidential limousine. Now you think when he finishes this lap, is he gonna do a burnout? What kind of horsepower is underneath the hood of that car? Secretary of State Pompeo just seriously put the deep state on notice. Last year, a Chinese government-backed think tank in Beijing produced a report that assessed all 50 of America's governors on their attitudes towards China. Many of you indeed in that report are referenced by name. So here's the lesson. It's happening in your states with consequences for our foreign policy, for the citizens that reside in your states, and indeed for each of you. Consequences for each of you. And so has Attorney General Barr. I'm here to announce the indictment of Chinese military hackers, specifically four members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, for breaking into the computer systems of the credit reporting agency Equifax, and for stealing the sensitive personal information of nearly half of all American citizens. What do you think the Equifax hack was really about? adding more personal data of millions of Americans to a private sector intelligence service database. Here in the Virginia area, suburban Virginia area, just outside of Washington, the company was called the Analysis Corporation. This parent entity was a security company, and they were doing security services for the U.S. military in Baghdad and throughout Iraq. But at the same time, they had an office in Beijing, and they were approaching the Chinese government-owned companies. Since 9-11, there has been tremendous progress here in the United States as well as internationally, as far as putting together that architecture that is required to be able to share and access information. John Brennan left government and went to work for a small intelligence contractor. Different information technology systems, we have different authorities, we have different responsibilities as far as handling different types of information to include on U.S. persons, U.S. citizens. An interesting mix of global intelligence. One former employee of the company called that a huge conflict of interest. In addition, it's not just what we've been able to do here within the United States. Why do we have global private security firms that are operating in Beijing and Washington and Baghdad at the same time? We're trying to, and we have, in fact, made a lot of progress internationally. Remember John Brennan's Global Strategies Group? Global Strategies Group, for example, is uh, registered in Luxembourg, not in England. Uh, it, there are subsidiaries of subsidiaries. Some of these companies are spun out, go public, go private again. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep track of them. Well, apparently they're now gone. What we do know is that John Durham is focusing very closely on John Brennan and the CIA. I think he's also looking at that ICA, that intelligence community assessment that John Brennan got done towards the end of the, the Barack Obama tenure to, to make sure whether or not uh, that was thoroughly investigated and whether or not all the right information made its way into that ICA. Which John Brennan testified under oath to Trey Gowdy. He said 
No, we did not use the dossier in the intelligence assessment. And John Brennan told you straight out the dossier had nothing to do with the FISA process. We now know that was one of the single things they used, the dossier, to actually get those FISA warrants. But we see in the IG report, Michael Horowitz's report, that James Comey and even Andrew McCabe said, no, 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 wait a minute. Brennan did say he used it in the intelligence assessment. Christopher Steele, a respected ex M16 agent who compiled the unverified dossier on Donald Trump. Steele began sending his findings to both British and American intelligence as a matter of national security. The problem is private intelligence services that treasonously intermingle with foreign intelligence services as a way to bypass constitutional restrictions on spying to illegally collect data. It's national security sacrificed for global governance. Well before Belgium, the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security were already working to identify terror suspects through facial recognition technology. It's one thing for there to be a sense of constitutional limitation and due process when the government has access to all data and information about its citizens. It's entirely different for an unregulated private enterprise and international black market to have access to all that data and information about not just U.S. citizens, but the population globally. We are completely oblivious to an international intelligence syndicate free from government regulation and oversight coming to us through electronics, software, apps, and social media where we freely waive our privacy rights. Last year I received an invitation to an event that promised to be, quote, an occasion for exclusive deal-making. It said, quote, the opportunities for mutually beneficial economic development between China and our individual states are tremendous, end of quote. But the invitation was actually from a former governor. Turns out it was Kentucky Governor Bevin who invited Pompeo to the U.S.-China Governors Collaboration Summit in 2019. So that for the next 40 years, and the next 400 years, and the next 4,000 years, we will have an opportunity to remember that this summit was the beginning of this constant change, this incredible journey. We know that Kentucky's state motto is united we stand, divided we fall. What the invitation did not say is that the group the group I just mentioned is the public face of the Chinese Communist Party's official foreign influence agency, the United Front Work Department. Word has it, Bevan saw things that concerned him. Understandably, he invited Mike Pompeo, the former CIA director and current Secretary of State, to the summit. What if you made a new friend while you were at that event? What if your new friend asked you for introductions to other politi politically connected? and powerful people. What if your new friend offered to invest big money in your state, perhaps in your pension? As of its latest public filing, the Florida retirement system is invested in a company that in turn is invested in surveillance gear that the Chinese Communist Party uses. California's pension fund, the largest public pension fund in the country, is invested in companies that supply the People's Liberation Army that puts our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines at risk. If Pompeo's takeaway from the summit was corruption and Bevin invited Pompeo, it's not surprising Bevin lost the Kentucky governorship under questionable circumstances that appeared to be election meddling, which I covered in several previous reports. Remember the murdered DNC staffer who allegedly leaked mirrored copies of the DNC server, which allegedly had election meddling software on it used to steal the 2016 Democrat primary from Bernie Sanders? Remember my source claiming she sent copies of the mirrored DNC server to the Attorney General, DOJ, and that those materials are allegedly tied up in the Awan brothers' criminal case? I had SD cards, uh, two of them that I created, and they went straight to Sessions and Whitaker. I know for a fact from my sources that a lot of the stuff they're looking for is already in the Awan case. Remember how Seidel, Harp Enterprises, and Hart InterCivic documents, which appeared to show election meddling in the Kentucky 2019 election, were leaked to me? 
I hand delivered those documents to Governor Bevin's office back in November. Not surprising, individuals indicted recently by the DOJ were involved in election meddling. We have brought charges against intelligence officers operating undercover in the United States. And more recently, we have charged state sponsor actors for computer intrusions in the United States for the purpose of intellectual property theft for the use of their private sector, including bank robbery and interference with our democratic elections. Interference with our democratic elections. Remember Obama's aid package to Ukraine to help with elections that opened up Seidel an office in Kyiv? Remember President Trump's conspiracy theory about a DNC server in Ukraine? We have two thoughts. You have groups that are wondering why the FBI never took the server. Why haven't they taken the server? Why was the FBI told to leave the office of the Democratic National Committee? What happened to the server? What happened to the servers of the Pakistani gentleman that worked on the DNC? Where are those servers? They're missing. Mr. President, Mr. President, do, you, Mr. President do you believe that the Mr. emails from Hillary Clinton, do you believe that they're in Ukraine? Do you think this whole thing- I think they could be. Ukraine? Hopefully it's gonna be found out very soon. But I, I think that a lot of progress has been made. A lot of progress has been made. It's not just state actors. There are non-state actors too who are out there acting in ways that are deeply inconsistent with what we're trying to do to protect our elections. America should leave no stone unturned. So whatever nation it is, uh, that we have information that so much as suggests that there might have been interference or an effort to interfere in our elections, we, we have an obligation to make sure that the American people get to go to the ballot box, cast their ballots in a way that is unimpacted. This is all starting to come together beautifully, isn't it? Now, you don't think the DNC would be so bold as to try to steal the primary from Bernie again, do you? We have been tracking all the polls for months now in Iowa, and now really into the final hours of this campaign. This is what it looks like. What Democrats were trying to do here with Iowa was potentially, as a party, sort of call the field. And of course, the movement in these final two weeks, really, of the Iowa campaign, it's right here at the top. It's Bernie Sanders, in the average, has taken the lead of several points over Joe Biden. Well, you're watching. And then flip it over. Heads. 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 Heads.
acting attorney um, general Whitaker later. Maybe it's a tad more difficult with President Trump's intelligence community paying close attention to the 2020 elections. In the wake of the Iowa caucus, the subject of election security is more important than ever. USC experts will lead discussions with state and local officials in an effort to improve election cybersecurity. So what are the Dems to do? What lesson did you learn from impeachment? Uh, that the Democrats are crooked. They've got a lot of crooked things going. You're impeached forever. You're never getting rid of that scar. Obviously, there's always impeachment 2.0. Might you impeach him over this, over Roger Stone and the sentencing? You know, we're not going to take our options off the table. Eric Swalwell is already moving towards impeachment. How many times will they take us off this cliff? He's impeached forever. First, we have to find a way. Find a way, find a way. Ah, Christopher Ray. Watch Chairman Nadler fishing FBI Director Christopher Wray for information about potential political indictments. And I assume that it is correct that neither the President, the Attorney General, uh, or any other administration official has asked the FBI to open improper political investigations. And no one has asked me to open an investigation based on anything other than the facts, the law, and proper predication. Thank you. And additional ways to impeach the President. What reporting mechanisms are available for FBI officials and employees to report concerns if they believe the agency or they are being asked to pursue politically motivated investigations? Well, there are a number of uh, avenues that uh, an employee who is troubled by you know, any number of things. There are whistleblower provisions. Uh, they have the ability to go up their supervisory chain. Uh, we have a number of mechanisms independent of the supervisory chain inside the organization. Uh, and then under certain circumstances, there are, of course, reporting mechanisms, I think, even to Congress. Perfect. So all the Democrats need is for Trump to A, and someone at the DOJ, preferably Bill Barr, to do B, and voila, you have a new reason for impeachment. What's this? The DOJ spanked prosecutors in the Roger Stone case for seeking too severe a punishment. Senior Justice Department officials intervened to lessen the recommended sentence of the president's convicted longtime associate. Well, this morning, Mr. Trump congratulated Attorney General William Barr for his intervention. He called the case out of control and slammed Mueller's initial probe. What's this incoming tweet? This morning on Twitter, President Trump insisted that he did not ask Barr to step in on the Stone case, but he has, quote, the legal right to do so, he maintains as president. Oh, and the judge that happened to be involved in both General Flynn's and Roger Stone's case lost their job through the shuffle? Uh, that's right. This is significant. It appears to be another move in the president's post-acquittal campaign of retribution. Jesse Liu was the U.S. attorney here in Washington. She received several referrals from the special counsel's investigation, and she oversaw the prosecutions of several of the president's associates, Roger Stone, Mike Flynn, and Paul Manafort. Oops. As Democrats are now demanding investigations into why A.G. Barr intervened in the Roger Stone case. He is now going to testify in front of the House Judiciary Committee. I'd also like him to come to the Senate. And along with my colleagues, I've asked him to do that so we can probe him. <laughs> on the role of the president in trying to influence uh, decisions in the Department of Justice. Oh, snap. Barr is testifying in March of all times. The interesting thing of, about uh, Miss Lou's withdrawal is she is now free to speak. And if she knows of direct communication that Barr perhaps had with staff at DOJ or with her, she can now testify to all of that. And the White House would have a hard time blocking it. Well, there you have it. Impeachment time. He's impeached forever. And there's no way that Trump and Barr could be trolling the Dems into another bogus, phony impeachment, could he? They have walked into something that I was hoping they'd walk into for six months, and what they've exposed is probably what's going to turn out to be one of the major scandals of the early part of the 21st century. It's no coincidence that all of these things are happening simultaneously. Look! 
sentencing in the General Flynn case has been indefinitely suspended. Hmm. Right, this is a Fox News alert. Today we learn the Attorney General Bill Barr has now appointed an outside prosecutor to review Michael Flynn's case. What's this? He has appointed a U.S. attorney in Connecticut to look into the origins of the Russia investigation. And there's nothing the Dems or rhinos can do to stop what's coming next. There's this issue with, it's a big issue for a lot of people. I know there have been um, a lot of theories about this because of the failures of our law enforcement to solve the murder. Uh, it's the issue of Seth Rich. So we just had to sue for Seth Rich documents. And why do we think the FBI had records? Because in another case, we found Seth Rich at records. One of the officials says, I squashed the story with someone, denying any specific involvement. So we sued for records. I don't know what we're going to find. And now it's Trump's turn to play. So here's our pantry. This is just what we have available in our pantry, but we've got boxes that we have stockpiled, especially of the X2, the iodine, because sometimes the supply will waver on that and we don't want to miss out on having lots of iodine available for our family. But we got the Secret 12 here. I've got my Super Female Vitality, the Brain Force Plus, Michael CX is a great cleanse to do. It can help cleanse your body from like candida, any yeast. Um, the gut fusion is amazing. It's a great fiber supplement. Uh, we've got the real red pill, amazing product right there. Just help your, your brain enhance itself and really focus. Um, the carnivore digestive enzymes ultimate 12 some of these are even the older versions but we have the ultra 12 the b12 we've got knockout over here look at it's almost gone okay i'm not kidding this is what we we take i think we might only have a couple look at this we got three pills left we need to order some more knockout definitely get that good sleep i tell you if you take knockout you will have some of the best sleep and the most vivid dreams it's, a, it's amazing. We have Vitamin Mineral Fusion, which is a tasty drink. I give this stuff to my kids even. They love it. Uh, get those vitamins in when sometimes maybe you don't like swallowing pills or you're picky about pills or you don't like those nasty um, llama pills. This has a great flavor and it's a way to get those vitamins and minerals in your body that your body needs. But I've got the Flora Life, the Advanced Restorative Probiotics. Man, if I'm ever having stomach problems, I take this and it just heals my gut. You know, sometimes being out on the road traveling, you can't always pick the best food. Sometimes fast food and other yucky foods are the only thing available. And this Flora Life is a lifesaver. I take the chill port, I take the chill force to chill out after a stressful day. Um, it's amazing. It just helps you relax and we kind of joke around. Hey, take a chill pill. Why don't you take a chill pill? Take advantage of some of the great products that InfoWars has. Me and my family, we take the products. I wouldn't recommend anything to you that I didn't also take myself and give to my family. How to get banned from social media in three, two, one. The big tech giants want you to stop spreading the coronavirus. Wait a minute, let me rephrase that. The big tech giants want you to stop spreading unfounded conspiracy theories rejected by the establishment mainstream media. And that means the first casualty of the coronavirus is the truth. Aren't you interested to know what they don't want you to know? <laughs> you ought to be. It is a weapon system. This is a violation of the Geneva Convention. This is a crime against humanity. The WHO is uh, up to its eyeballs in uh, biological warfare uh, research. That's the whole purpose of biological warfare. And they've been caught doing it. 
In the latest effort to control the narrative and prevent the outbreak of real, unbiased investigative journalism, the big tech giants are now targeting independent news outlets, or anyone for that matter, who is going against the mainstream and presenting solid evidence that the coronavirus might be a man-made biological weapon developed and manufactured in communist China. But if you talk about any of this stuff, they'll shut you down on Twitter, on Facebook. Now get this. Recently, YouTube announced that they were approached by Newsweek, who requested that they delete all the YouTube channels that were just flagged by Newsweek for posting videos about the coronavirus they don't want you to see. YouTube's response? Swift action, of course. They quickly deleted all the video channels flagged by Newsweek magazine as inappropriate, which included the remaining InfoWars proxy channels and the powerful conspiracy empire, Natural News. Within hours, Twitter joined in on the purge and slapped down a permanent ban on Zero Hedge for publishing coronavirus conspiracy theories. We'll have none of that. Twitter has banned the site Zero Hedge from its platform after Zero Hedge published an article that linked a Chinese scientist to the virus outbreak. Both actions by YouTube and Twitter to delete this information and kill the messenger has been enthusiastically celebrated by the tattletale gatekeepers over at Newsweek. After all, a global pandemic of human origin infecting tens of thousands of people accompanied by a massive government cover-up, that's not a news story. In fact, according to Big Tech, that's none yet. <laughs>